Hi guys, I'm Johnny Minaz and this is the Spirits of Gaming. This week I'm going to be playing Rocket League with its Tokyo Drift style. I'm going to be pairing it with a Japanese whiskey. From the Chichibu Distillery, it's the Ichiros E-Power Single Malt. Very rare, very delicious, can't wait to crack it open. So, can I turbocharge my way through this episode with the ultimate goal of keeping you entertained and hopefully I don't spin my wheels? This week, on the Spirits of Gaming. Alright guys, today I'm going to be playing Rocket League and I'm going to be drinking the uh, Ichiros E-Power. I'm very, very excited. I'm going to start searching for a game I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, uh, the whiskey itself. So, I'm going to be playing three games today. If I can win two out of three, I'll consider it a victory. So, uh, this whiskey... Uh, I'll start off by pouring myself a bit. First of all, let's hear that noise. Oh, that's a good one. Alright, pour myself a nice healthy dram and pop it back up now this I cannot say it enough this is a ballsy whiskey ah all right we're starting one nil down that's all right I'm just gonna start like it it's fine now when I say it's a ballsy whiskey it comes in at 61.1 percent so it is very very harsh on the palate all right I'm gonna stay at the back here defense wins games all right I'll let better players than me do all the hard work. I'm just gonna stay at the back, see if I can just put them off slightly. There you go. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. Now it is a double barrel whiskey. I'm gonna tell you a little bit, a little bit about what a double barrel whiskey is. So a uh, double barrel whiskey is it is what it sounds like. Uh, they age it in uh, two separate barrels. So the two barrels that they use, one is a uh, is an ex sherry Minzunara cask. Now a Minzunara is a uh, type of Japanese oak and it's uh, very expensive because it's quite uh, fragile to use it's hard to make barrels out of and quite often the barrels leak so they may not be the most efficient things but um ooh, whiff but the flavor that they impart in it are um uh, unmistakable uh, now they uh, they impart these huge uh, huge vanilla notes get out of there there you go now they impart these huge vanilla notes. Now it starts off in an ex sherry manzanilla cask, and that's going to give us a uh, a fair bit of sweetness. But the main sweetness it gets is in the second barrel. Now it's actually finished off in extra char in extra charred uh, new oak American barrels. So um quite like a bourbon for the second half of the uh, of the maturation process, not maturation of the maturing process. And um, what you end up with is a whiskey that is um. It's got the spice and the oak of a bourbon, but then the sweetness and the vanilla of the uh, Mizunara. Ah, oh, failed there, John. Stop talking, mate. You're rabbiting on when you should be playing. Um, look, it's 61.1%. It comes in, uh, there's only 538 bottles in the world, and I'm quite fortunate to have one. Especially since they come in at about $700 Australian a bottle. That'll be about 600 for you Yanks out there. Um, so yeah, I can, I can consider myself uh, very fortunate to be uh, sampling one of these tonight. So, um, quite a lot what you want to do. So I've told you a little bit about the uh, the two barrels that it uses. Now, um, one of the terms that it uses on the front of the barrel is um, it says X Mizunara Hogshead Barrel. And when people ask, what's, what the hell is a Hogshead Barrel? I don't really understand it. And a Hogshead uh, is a very generic type of barrel. That is your usual type of barrel. Like uh, for bourbons, it's all Hogshead Barrels. Now it comes from an old 15th century English term, which is like Hogshead, or whatever they pronounced it back then. H-O-G-G-E-S-H-E-D-E, -E -E, like Hogshead, I suppose. And um, it's uh, it was a measurement of a barrel for a certain... Um... Oh god, I need to focus on this game. For a certain amount of volume. So a Hogshead barrel is uh, 63 gallons in the barrel. Yeah, that's bad is uh, 63 uh, gallons in the barrel. And so, um, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what a hogshead barrel is. Now, whoo! Got my hand back on the controller just in time there. All right. Whiff! 
Dwayne the White G. Go on, Dwayne the White G. Yes, you legend. Maybe we can actually pull this back. All right, now um, that's a little bit about the uh, the barrels that it's aged in. A little bit about the percentage. Um, now the the Chichibu and Ich uh, the Chichibu Distillery I absolutely love. It comes out with a lot of my favorite whiskeys. If you get if you see your hands, if you see a, a bottle, grab one. More than likely, can't guarantee it for every single one, but more than likely, you got your hands on a winner. Um, now, uh, this bottle is pretty rare and, um, you know, quite expensive, or at least for me with my, uh, bartender's wage. But, um, so yeah, whenever you're going to buy an expensive whiskey, all I can do is I recommend that you do your research first. Get this out of there. Aerial hit! You! Um, yeah, I recommend that you do your research first, because you don't want to spend a lot of money on a whiskey that you might not end up enjoying. Now... Just because a whiskey's, oh, just because a whiskey's expensive doesn't mean that it's good. I've found it to be the opposite many, many times. So, um, doesn't mean that it's old. Could do. Doesn't mean that it's rare. Could mean that as well. Um, but doesn't mean that it's good. I mean, also, what is good? It's all your opinion. Um, See, so yeah, I recommend that if you ever, if you are ever going to spend that sort of money on a whiskey, do, you know, do a bit of research. See if. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. See if you're gonna like it first. You know, um, li listen to whiskey reviews. <gasps> listen to whiskey reviews. Maybe this one, maybe another one. Wh like whatever fits you. So, you know, like again, whiskey reviews are always so subjective. It's always the person's opinion. Um, but what they always do is they always name certain uh, dominant ca uh, dominant characteristics. So if you find that uh, one like this, like I noticed on this one, there's a lot of um, kind of charred, burnt honey that's really, really lovely. And uh, if you do get that, then fantastic. If you don't, that, that's all your personal opinion as well. But normally whenever you follow these whiskeys reviews, listen to the flavors that they say. If you think, I would like those flavors in a whiskey, then get the whiskey. If you don't think you'd like those flavors in a whiskey, look, it might not be for you, and that's fine. Buy whatever you like, is what I'm trying to say in the end. Oh. Yeah, it looks like I might have lost this one. Ah! Senor Whiffington. In for the win. In for the loss. Alright. They're going to count down from 10, and I think that's going to be my first loss of the evening. So it'll be one out of three. No bueno. You! All right. That's one out of three a loss. Not a great way to start, but let's start getting into this whiskey. So, straight on the nose. Breathe through the mouth. You can get a lot more flavor, a lot more impact. I'm ready up and vote for a rematch. Why not? So, uh, first thing I get... It's very hot, very warm, very pungent. You get uh, these kind of hot fudge and toffee notes coming through. Um, it's quite nutty. Like I said, a lot of those rolled oats, malt, and like charred honey coming through as well. It's, um, yeah, it's one hell of a whiskey. Now, coming in at 61%, it's probably going to be too much to drink straight off the bat. So, what I do there is I take a sip. Wash it around my mouth. What that does is it alerts the taste buds. Fucking hell! We're drinking whiskey. And I go, yeah, we're drinking whiskey. You better get used to it, because more is on the way. Um, what that's going to do is going to make you salivate slightly. It is going to burn. It's not going to be that pleasurable. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's going to alert your taste buds that you better be ready for some more, because that's what's coming in. Now, I've got my really wanky uh, bottle here to add some water. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Not a lot. I'm not going to fill up the glass by any means. I'm going to add just a few drops. Just about that much. And that's all you're going to need, right? And what that's going to do is, not only is it going to break down the molecular structure of the whiskey, but it's going to allow us to find those much more subtle, in-depth flavors. Here we are. I'm setting up for a new game. Hopefully, we can find three new players, and then we can get on with the game. All right. Just by adding that much water, now I can start breathing through my nose, you know? Oh man, I really get those rolled oats, molten, char grilled honey. Char grilled honey is the main one because that new, that new barrel, the extra charred new barrel, really comes in there, and um, really influences the way that the whiskey behaves now. So, much more easy to palate, much more easy to taste. 
Um, and really, really good. I gotta say, lovely level of sweetness. It's got these kind of sweet, salty thing going in. It's very, very Moorish. The body is super viscous. It coats your mouth like oil, and the finish is lovely. The flavors stay there. Another thing I'll say about the uh, about when somebody mentions a whiskey's finish as well is a lot of people say, "Oh, this whiskey has a, a very, very long finish." If it's like a, a smoky whiskey or something like that, and that doesn't mean it has a long finish. The longer those kind of raw, those raw flavors stay in your mouth. Oh, hang on a minute, Johnny boy. Hey, in for the win! The, the, the longer those kind of um, raw flavors stay in your mouth, that's not the finish. It's more for me. It's more the, the the longer those subtler flavors stay in your mouth. The more that the flavors that define this whiskey against any other whiskey stay in your mouth, that's the length, and that's where the money should be. Uh, or at least that's where you should see the money anyway. I'm just going to stay back here. Defense wins games. I think they have, quite appropriately, Lagman is doing exactly that. Not sure I can consider this a win, but I'm going to take what I can get. Uh, fortunately in this game, if he stays uh, idle for too long, he's going to be kicked and we can get someone new in anyway. Let's try and rack up the goals before then. All right. Yeah, God, I love this game. If you have a group of friends around, it's a great thing. There's a lot of near misses in this game, which which what makes it so dramatic. You know, you'd have a group of mates all just going, ah, close one, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's one of those pick up and play games. You can come home, have a quick game, and um, yeah, then just dust, just leave, and you're fine. Is that going in? There we go. Lag man still being laggy. But, being 3-0 up, I can relax, talk a little bit uh, a little bit more about the whiskey. Now, there has been a resurgence, not a resurgence, kind of this huge upturn, or massive popularity spike, if you would, in Japanese whiskey over the, over the last few years. And um, most of the whiskeys have gone up by, oh, gee, like, just when I look at them, it's kind of 70, 80, 90, 100% in terms of um, price that you're, ah! Oh! off the corner in terms of price that you should be paying. Ah, come on lag man, get involved. It's not fun 3v2. Alright, he's been kicked and we have Poncho. Here we go, 3v3. This is what we were after. This is a game. Alright. Defense wins games. Stay back, John. This is the bit where it's going to blast it forwards, and this is the bit where I need to be. You! There we go. Get it back into the danger area. Ah! Mr. Whiff. That name again is Mr. Whiff. Alright. Gonna get a goal in here? Anybody? Just gonna. Give it a little tap a -roo. Anyway, like I was saying, Japanese whiskey, yeah, the price has shot up massively. Because people are starting to, or people realize, that not only is the quality really good with Japanese whiskeys, but it's, it's kind of everything. It's the styling, it's it's the style of the styling of the bottle, the, uh, the style of whiskey it is. Um, but they've got a lot of quality coming out from that country. And um, yeah, you got to respect it. So, uh, even something like this coming out is, um, the best thing about, uh, that I find out Japanese whiskeys is that they know what they want to do and they try and nail that to a T. So, a lot of whiskeys, they'll go, ah, oh, we'll just be bold and flavor, we'll be very, very smoky, we'll be the smokiest whiskey, the peatiest whiskey, like Octomore. Whereas Japanese whiskeys always show more restraint in their flavor, I find. And, um, and... Just because of that, you, you always end up getting a slightly better drinking experience. Not always, but look, I'm a fan of Japanese whiskey. I like what they do. They do it well. I'm drinking one now. I've got a good buzz. Everything's... Ah, smashing. Oh! That was a neat little skill. Look at this. It's totally done me, eh? Coming in for the defense. Getting ready. That is a lovely bit of play.
I could definitely have a few of these. It's, um... It really dries out on the finish as well. Just from that new oak, like I said, because you get a lot of that kind of bourbon American spice. Um, it really dries out on the finish. And it's, um... Oh, God. Woo! Take that one. That's my hat trick. You! Alright, so since we've had three on three, it's one all. Alright, stay back. Defense wins games. Get my little boost. Hang on back. See what see what this guy's gonna do. Ah! My own player chipped it over me. What are you doing, you nutter? Alright, here we go. There we go. Alright. 4-1. We should have this one locked down. There's going to be a little asterisk next to this little win because we were uh, 3v2 for most of the time. Ah! Oh, I was going to set up myself. Can anyone get it in? I'd love we get it in now. Win a little 2 1. Yes! At the buzzer! Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider this one a win. That is 2 1 with 3 on 3. It's 1 all. Alright. At least that makes the third game a little bit more exciting. Whew! I'll tell you another good thing about buying car, uh, car strength whiskey as well. Is, um. End of there. Just a little. Oh. Um. Look, whenever uh, whenever whiskey companies get whiskey off the tap, they always get it at a slightly higher percentage. They'll get it at you know 45, 53, 60, 65 percent, and they will ready up, but replay. And they'll um and they'll just cut it with water. Cut it down to 40 percent, 43 percent, 46 percent, whatever your country's tax bracket is. Saves them money. Um, saves you money, which they pass on to you. Is it the best thing for the whiskey? Could be. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But whenever you buy a cast strength whiskey and you're drinking it at that higher percentage, what you can do is water it down yourself to exactly the level that you like. And what are you going to end up with? More whiskey. Turn your, turn your single into a double. Turn your, you know, turn your one into 1 1.5. And if you calculate that by the cost of the whiskey, you can actually end up coming out all right. Um, the main thing you get is... Um, Kind of customization. Oh, is that straight off the bat? That is a lovely shot. Um, yeah. Now, now I've had a decent jam of this whiskey with a bit of water. It should raise my palate. I'll do it after this. It should raise my palate to being ready to actually drink a 61% whiskey. Because when you first start drinking whiskey, you're drinking a whiskey and coke, whiskey and dry, whiskey and lemonade. Then whiskey and soda, whiskey and water, whiskey on the rocks, whiskey neat. Um, and you know, you're drinking whiskey neat at 40%. Because uh, if you hand a 40% whiskey to someone that doesn't normally drink spirits, they're going to they're gonna cough, they're going to gag, they're not going to enjoy it very much. Now when you drink a lot of 40% whiskeys neat, um, your palate can... It, it's pretty much like eating chili, you know? Uh, your palate can adapt and it can start getting ready to... Uh, to drink whiskeys at a higher percentage. So now that I've, and not, not only just, you know, drinking whiskeys, you know, through the year, but um, drinking whiskeys in the night. So like I said, you know, drinking this one straight off the bat um, would be a bit much for me. Now, now that I've had a couple of nips, uh, now, yeah, oh, I just love it. Now I can pour myself a dram of 61% whiskey, and I think I'll be able to tolerate it. If not, I'll add a bit of water. If I can, fantastic, because I'll kind of have those raw, truer flavors. But it's not something um, 
Yeah, whiskey, whiskey should never burn, whiskey should never be unpleasant. So if you do find it's a bit too strong, just have water until you like it. At the end of the day, all whiskey is quite sweet. Um, I know it doesn't taste like that when you first taste it, it tastes like burn. But all whiskey is quite sweet and the, um, and once you get the levels right, you're fine. And you can really start to appreciate it. So. This really is a very, very good whiskey. I'm really, really enjoying this. Yeah, that's lovely. Ah. It's very, very warming flavors as well. A lot of whiskey, the huge majority of whiskeys, I think of as very, very warming flavors because they um, because it's quite a hot smell. It's quite a and it warms you down here. So you start thinking of like hot fudge, hot chocolate, um, caramel, toffee, kind of uh, smoke, all these kind of hot flavors. And that is that is the epitome of this. There are some, in my opinion, there are some cold flavor whiskeys. Uh, Green Spot Irish whiskey is one. The Hakushu Distillers Reserve is another. And you actually get these notes of like um. Peppermint with it, uh, peppermint, rock melon, these kind of colder flavors that you'd associate it with, and um, so you know that's an idea of a of a cold flavor whiskey in my opinion. Now this is a quintessential hot flavor whiskey with that kind of char grilled burnt honey flavor to it. It is sticky, it is rich, it coats your mouth, it is so viscous. It is yeah. Is that just gonna roll in? We'll take it, and that's the hat trick. For my man. Turn it up, life 92. And yeah, that, that's what this whiskey does, and it does it in spades. Like I was saying about Japanese whiskeys earlier, it is, it knows what it is, it knows what it wants to be, and it executes it. And that's, that's all that matters. Oh, just wide. All right. Come on, John. Start playing aggressive. Time to get a goal in this final game. Now we're just dribbling it about. Just get this for the boost. Nice, we can get to that first. Oh. Ah, oh, that was the wrong time to boost. Didn't do anything there. That's 10 seconds of me staring at the screen like that. And then just do a shit move. Alright. But it's not easy, this. Kind of review a whiskey and play games at the same time. Especially this is like the uh, sixth time that I filmed this because I keep fucking up the recording. So I've got a little buzz going as well. Alright, here we go. Knock that out. Balls it up, all on purpose. Lines it up for him. Johnny Minaz with the assist. Probably have one too many. Alright. That is just spectacular. Oh! Oh, you bastard! <laughs> Defense. That's 5 0. We'll probably start getting a little bit experimental here. Go, 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 go! Alright. What is this? Keep away? Let me hit the. F Let me hit the goddamn ball. Ah, oh, you bastards. That's it. I don't care where this goes. You. End up being pretty good. Oh. All right.
Two out of three. We'll consider that a victory. All right. Win for the day. Just go to exit menu. That way I don't waste my teammates' times. All right. Now, for the final review. Here we go. One, if I was going to give a final review on Rocket League is just buy it, buy it right now. It is, I mean, look, you can get it really cheap nowadays. Let's take this off. You can get it really cheap nowadays. It is a brilliant, addictive game. Like I said, perfect for when you have a group of friends around. You have multiple controllers, fine. If you grew up, up online, that's great as well. Because, you know, a great thing about Rocket League is a lot of games don't do that, that old split screen. You know, that old, you are... 12 years old playing N64 on a TV that big and that is split screen so you have about that much size to it. Rocket League still does that and massive respect to them for doing that because I really appreciate it when a game does that because that way you can have all friends you know in the same room playing the same game really live really livens it up. Now for the whiskey huge fan of this whiskey I mean I've been I've been bigging it up the entire show and uh, there's reason for that it is very 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 good so um, in terms of a rating, love the styling of it as well. Love that. Crowd. Look, I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. All right. Now, the only reason why I hesitated is that I almost just gave it five stars. It's damn near perfect. It is. It knows what it is, and it executes it very, very well. The salted butterscotch charred honey flavor coming through there you can yeah you could have a bunch of these and never be disappointed i could have a bunch of these bottles on my back wall and be very very happy unfortunately there's only 538 in the world now there's 537 and that's the way that it ticks down unfortunately with these kind of rare great whiskies so um look cheers this is the spirits of gaming that's rocket league and you've been great as always Follow me on Twitch, uh, you know, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos come out. And you've been great as always. Thanks, guys. Bye.